Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to your hands-on practice with arrays. This is going to teach you the basics of arrays, so how to create them, how to fill them with elements, and throughout the next couple videos, we're going to learn different things we can do with arrays. So pretty soon we'll be talking about using arrays with for loops, some special methods with arrays, and so forth. Now before we get started, you gotta check out our sponsor. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. All right, so to create an array, you say what type of information you want to store. So for example, int, and then you put square brackets. That's how to indicate it's an array, and then you give it a name. So for example, we could say grades, and then you can end it with a semicolon. Now this is going to declare an array, but we're not actually creating the array. We're not initializing it yet. So this is the equivalent of saying int x when we're working with integers. We actually haven't given x a value, we haven't initialized it. So if you want to give it a value, what you can do is you can say equals and then say new int and then square brackets and inside the square brackets put a number. So this is the number of elements you can store in the array. You could do 100, you can do 10. We'll just go with 10 just so we have a nice reasonably sized array. Now first thing you might want to know is that you can also put the square brackets over here on the left beside the variable name. So you might also see it like so. This is more of a C style of doing arrays. I think most people prefer to put it on the data type. That's what I'll be doing, but it is kind of cool that you can do either one. Personally, the reason I like to put it over here is because it's clear what data type it is. When you just see int, you might be confused thinking it's an integer, and then you'll later on see that it's an array. So maybe that's just something I would do, but that's why I personally like the square brackets on the data type. It's just really clear up front. Now to access the elements, you have to use indexes. So we can say grades zero, and we can assign it a value such as 10. So the first element starts with index zero, and it goes up from there. So the last spot in the array is going to have index nine. That's a total of 10 spots, zero through nine. And then we can output this just like any other integer. We just say grades of zero, and then we run, and look at that, we get the value 10. Java has a shorthand way of filling an array with values. And what you do is, let's just get rid of this here. And what we're going to do is we're also going to get rid of this new int size 10 and replace it with curly braces. Now inside the curly braces, we can put the values. And however many values you use is how big the array is going to be. So in this situation, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 values. So the size of the array should be 10. Running this, it should give us the exact same output because index zero still has the value 10, but you can easily see when we change that, it's going to update. So this is my preferred way of giving arrays values. The downside here is you have to know all those values up front and they have to be hard coded like so. If you don't know the values up front, you're going to have to think of a more dynamic, creative way of filling this array, such as using a loop. You can also, at this point, update a particular index. So for example, you could say grades of index one and assign it the value 900. And then we can output the index one. You can see there's no compiling errors. We run it and we get 900. So basically we updated index one here and change the value to 900. The only thing we can't do is go beyond the size of the array. That's going to be an issue. So for example, if we go in here and access index 10, well, this has index nine so index 10 doesn't exist. So watch what happens when we run this. Oh, we get an exception. Exceptions are when we have a runtime error and there's no code there to deal with it. So this is a problem. If you really wanna fix this, you can say try and then catch something like this. Running this, we see we get the exception outputted into the console. But we haven't really talked about that, so don't worry about that for now. Just don't go outside of the bounds of the array, or you will get pwned, you'll probably get fired, and then you'll lose everything you own, and you'll be homeless, and your your loved ones will probably like abandon you and whatnot. So 